Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at using end effectors for quadruped characters. Okay, just animating them in various ways using the various uh, constraint types in the 2D Motion Key Editor. Alright, so if you haven't already watched it, please watch the uh, end effectors tutorial on biped characters first, as that explains a little bit more about each constraint type uh, one by one. In this tutorial we're going to be using them more in practical scenarios, where we're going to be creating animations. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring in our first actor. Let's go over to here to Actor tab under Character. Under G3, we'll find our G3 animals. And our first guest here is the sheepdog. I'm going to bring in the sheepdog here. It looks like a big old mop. Let's just zoom in on him. And let's go ahead and enable the 2D motion key editor. So once we do that, you can see that by default we have all of the feet. Okay, so the dog has four feet and they're all locked. Okay, uh, the biped characters generally only have the two, uh, two feet locked. So uh, same thing, if we take our hip bone, again, the hip bone is the main bone on our character the root bone rather, we can just kind of, you know, bend both legs down like this. Okay, pretty straightforward. We took, took a look at that with our uh, biped characters. Uh, I'm going to reset the position here. And we're going to create an animation of having our dog kind of sit on the ground. Now, I mean, we could have like the traditional kind of like, you know, sit, sit boy, you know, good boy like this. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to have the dog kind of sit on his haunches, on his back legs there. And the way we can achieve that is by taking our dog, we need to enable stretch bone. Okay, so stretch bone needs to be enabled here. If we don't have stretch bone enabled, then if we try to rotate this, the front feet will go off the ground, just like this, like he's jumping. Okay, so we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is just enable stretch bone. And once I do, you can see that we now are able to stretch those front legs like this. We can then move that the rear end back into position like this and, uh, you know, stretch it as, as we want. And I think a position like this should be good. Um, but what we're going to do first, we need to actually go to a different frame before we do that. So let's control Z all of this. Uh, we can actually just reset the position. And let's go to frame, I don't know, frame 20 or something. Uh, 15 maybe. It'll be a 15 frame sit. Okay, so at frame 15, let's do start that animation. Uh, we can take that like this and rotate the um, rear towards the ground there and just kind of place the dog like this. And stretch those legs out, not too much. Okay, just something like this, and there we go. And at the same frame, we're going to take the uh, root for the tail and rotate that upwards like this, and we'll have our neck kind of lean forward as well, in the same position, just like this. Okay, so what we have then is uh, we have this uh, animation right here, just like this, where our dog will kind of go down to the ground like that. However, the uh, the rear legs kind of look a little bit strange. Uh, they don't really seem to, uh, um, the feet don't seem to rotate downwards. So what we want to do in that case, let's go back to frame 15, and let's adjust those feet, okay? And the way we're going to adjust them is by using the end effector rotation. If we don't have that end effector rotation on right uh, at, the, at first, we can select the B shank, and we, if we move it, it'll move the entire foot like this, okay? That's not what we want. We actually want the, the uh, end effector to kind of uh, rotate downwards towards the ground here, this one, the second one here, okay? So let's go ahead and enable that end effector rotation. And once we do that, let's select the shank bone and move it down like this. Okay, so this is a, this is the kind of a process that we want to go through. We want to get the shank down like that way. Okay, we can do the same thing by selecting the other bone right here, the rear bone, and doing the same thing, bringing it back into a relative position like this. Okay, and that'll be just fine and dandy. So then we have this uh, animation like this where the dog's kind of, you know, sitting down on his haunches a bit more accurately. Okay, so that's using stretch bone and end effector rotation to get a more accurate uh, seated result. And if I want, I can, you know, click and drag the uh, project length slider here to, uh, you know, 15 frames or so. And just uh, play back and loop it. We have our dog repeatedly loop. Okay, <laughs> maybe we don't want to have it uh, you know, looped in a different way, but uh, that's basically the result that we're getting right there. Okay, good boy. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, delete this character and bring in our next guest, which is the uh, the painted horse, right? The cave horse. So double click and bring him in here. Now, the cave horse is a good example of when we want to keep the end effector angle, okay? And I'm going to demonstrate that briefly here. Let's go to the motion key editor one more time, and we're going to take a look at the horse's feet. Okay, so the horse, if we move, if we move the foot, uh, let's actually just uh, disable those uh, other. Uh, constraints. So for the horse, if we move the foot, you can see that um, we can move it like this or we can move it that way. But horses don't normally move their, their legs this way. In fact, I don't know if they can uh, biologically move their, physically move their feet, their legs that way. I think they're, they're generally like this way. Um, 
But what we're going to do here is we're going to just uh, keep the angle, okay? So we want to just uh, have the angle like this. We want to keep the, the rotation like this, okay, for the, for the ankle. And we will also want to keep our uh, foot uh, rotated towards the ground. So what we can do is we can take our, our leg like this direction right here, and we can just uh, keep bend direction, okay? And when we do that, then we won't be able to go the front way, okay? So we'll, our horse will kind of have this motion right here. But again, the hoof is, you know, facing 90 degrees, so it's kind of a weird position. Uh, what I want to do here is take uh, reset the position, okay? And I'm going to keep end effector angle, okay? So once we do that, then we have this result right here, okay? We are keeping the bend direction, and we are keeping the end effector angle, and this is more how a horse's natural uh, rear legs will, will react, okay? And you can have a running motion like this. Now, I'm not going to go into the entire process of creating a running motion for a horse. I just wanted to show you, you know, the first two steps that you would normally take in order to get the, uh, the accurate uh, Smart IK uh, reaction type um, with this uh, particular end effector, okay? Just like this. And that's the result that you want. All right, that's about it for the horse. Let's go ahead and bring in our next uh, guest, who is the worm. Let's go to a G3 spine and find our look, worm caterpillar, okay? Bring a good old caterpillar in. And for the caterpillar, what we're going to do is we're going to have him inch along the ground, all right? So let's go back to just uh, frame one here. It doesn't really matter. We'll increase our project length slightly and open that motion key editor here. Okay, so the worm, if we take the uh, last, um, the worm only has basically this one end effector here. Uh, if we take this, we can move the the root bone. This is kind of like our hip for the for the worm. Okay, we can move it wherever we want. Um, if we lock our uh, bone here, our end effector, the single end effector, then you know we can have a result like this. But of course, um, unless we have stretch bone enabled, the worm's just going to kind of you know move along with wherever we move our mouse. So what we want to do is enable stretch bone and enable keep end effector angle and keep bend direction here. We'll have our worm then inch like this. Okay, so we'll kind of inch forward. We'll stretch out and then inch forward and stretch out like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and reset his position. And let's go to like frame uh, frame 10, for example. And then just bring this end effector forward like this. And then frame 20. Okay, then we'll have uh, the um, character just, uh, we'll select the uh, end effector bone there and move it over like this. Okay, and then frame uh, 30. We'll have the uh, this root bone come in like that. He's kind of trying to escape the screen there. All right, so what we would have is then a result like this. Okay, have our care worm little inch along just like that. Okay, so pretty clever, pretty quick and easy way to uh, you know make sure that your uh, your uh, bend direction is the same. Okay, your end effector angle is the same, and you have a more accurate uh, kind of creeping along like that with your worm. All right. And last but not least, we're going to go ahead and bring in a mop character. I'm going to delete the worm off the screen here. The mop is in the G3 Wings folder here. So G3 Wings will have mop. Let's just bring in the uh, good old mop here. Now the mop has a fairly unique bone structure. We go into the 2D motion key editor. We can see it right here. And we have two end effectors on each side. So what I can do is I can enable both of those and uh, bring the bones, the respective bones, all the way down like this. You can see we have... Uh, we can bring them straight like this. All right. Uh, we can take this bone here and bring it straight as well, just like that. So now we have kind of like a really, looks like a really long mustache maybe. And then we can take the hip bone of the, of the mop, just like this. We can, you know, kind of uh, have a little result like this and kind of just uh, have our mop dancing around. Okay. And then we can uh, take the uh, end effector bones, move them to different positions, and have, you know, even cooler dances like this. Uh, now that we have stretch bone on and, and uh, all that stuff, we can you know, have our mop just move around like this. And you can just totally kind of do whatever you want. It's just kind of a cool way to... I uh, just wanted to show you a cool demonstration of this of this mop and how you can, uh, you know, make it move and kind of dance around. And there you go. You can look menacing like this as well. Anyways, enough fooling around. I just kind of, kind of want to show you a couple of examples of, of using our uh, non-human characters, our non-biped characters, and how you can animate them and have fun with, uh, you know, the various constraints, just as a kind of a, a follow-up on the uh, biped tutorial that uh, dealt with uh, each, each of these individual constraints. All right, so thanks so much again for watching, everyone. Hopefully you learned a lot in this tutorial, and make sure you check out our YouTube videos on our YouTube channel, 
and our forums at forum.reillusion.com. And I hope to see you in the next video.